Welcome to the Ephesiology Podcast, a podcast dedicated to the study of the early Christian movement and its implications for the church today. Today, we're with Michael, our resident ephesiologist, Andrew Johnson, associate pastor at Neartown Church in Houston, Texas. Matt Till. Hey everyone, good to be with you. Michael, what is, um, what's coming up with uh, Ephesiology in the next year? Oh gosh, in the next year. Uh, we well, at least what's, what's, what's <laughs> happening like you... right now. <laughs> it's like you caught him off right guard. Now. I know. There's it's like, too much to like, say. There's so much happening. What's I'm happening right now to... that people can look forward to? I'm just trying to get through December. Um, well, we 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 have done so much over the course of this year. I mean, I, I mean, we just think about it. And maybe we need to do a program on this. But we're so blessed to have so many people around the world that are downloading our podcast. Um, I, I think I shared with you guys something like it's been up around six thousand downloads a, a day. Uh, that might be a one day. person That's bored amazing. out of their That's mind. Seriously, not right in my head. Yeah. Well, and, and it's a blessing to thank you to what all God of you who are listening to the podcast and sharing it with others. Yeah, yeah, I just think what's wrong with you, but that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's more appropriate. <laughs> it's more appropriate. Well, they're asking the same thing about us, like, more me, but you know, all of us. Like, what's wrong with you guys? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we we've got over four hundred people now that are participating in our master classes. And uh, and that's been overwhelming, and so we're very grateful for uh, th- those who are are participating in that. And and then of course we continue to to uh, pour out content. Um, we've just launched a, a, a revived actually a new journal, Sacred Tribes Journal, that's free on masterclasses.ephesiology.com. And if you're interested in the study of new religious movements, that's a, a great resource written by uh, top level uh, evangelical scholars on new religions. And so um, that's available for folks. We've, we've, uh, we, we have a book coming out and we have a, a, a live Zoom launch party on December 16th and 17th uh, on our new book called Social Injustice, the second volume. And uh, we have some, again, some top evangelical scholars that have spoken into that book, and they'll be making presentations, live presentations on Zoom those two days. And so we'll put that information in the in the show notes. So, um, yeah. So and we continue our our uh, appeal for ending a theological famine. It, it just amazes me. And I think that's my mind has been consumed about this for this Christmas season to think of there being uh, something like 50,000 uh, new uh, Christians baptized every single day. Uh, it's just amazing to, to, uh, to be at this time period, uh, you know, in our season to think, gosh, they're going to be worshiping Christ for the first time during Christmas. And yet to realize that uh, th- there's a need for a thousand trained pastors every day to lead these people and to pastor them, to care for them, and to ensure that they keep on uh, the the walk of faith. And so we're we're working hard to uh, try to end what we are calling a theological famine, and invite our our listeners to participate in that as well. You know, Michael, on that note, I, I just read an interesting article in the New York Times about how um, demographics are the best prediction of the future. And um, they're not always 100% accurate, but at least they can be the best predictor of what is necessary needed in the future. And as our demographics are uh, aging, but also growing, um, that is a great prediction of the future. And actually something we've probably missed out on, especially in the church. We've talked about that at length before, but how our churches have not kept pace with theological education um, of pastors and trained leaders in order to bring about and keep sustaining um, uh, really the Christian hope of the message and the gospel uh, in communities. So it should be of no surprise to us that um, more people don't know Jesus um, or at least have not come to faith um, is because we've not kept pace with theological education. So if we're going to look to the future, I think it only adds to the weight of what we've been saying here is that we need 
a thousand, was it a thousand new pastors trained every day, every day. Hey, and actually on that note, if you are a member of, I'm going to plug myself here, but also plug a physiology at the same time. If you are a user of the Logos Bible software, um, you can't see that because of my filter. Um, they published their 2022, um, seminary guide. Um, and, uh, in it is an article written by yours truly says, don't go to seminary. So I, uh, Uh published an article with, um, logos, uh, Bible software, but also mostly through, um, also my relationship and my, my position with Knox theological seminary, uh, down here in Florida. Um, but uh, the title of it is don't go to seminary, (laughs) but, uh, really it's a, um, Uh, It's an idea that if you are thinking of somebody who's looking at continuing your theological education and you're going to uproot your family and go to some well-known seminary, um, think again. Um, You should Mm -hmm. really reconsider where you are, where God has called you, and why an online seminary education is also probably going to be your best bet, especially in today's technological age. So uh, if you happen to be a user of that uh, software and you might have received a copy of it, take a look at it. I think it's on page like 38 or 39 in um, right in the middle. Um, but well, I'll get it published somewhere else as well, too. So for our online listeners, you can listen. So whether you're thinking about a school like Knox or even a physiology masterclasses, um, that's a great place for you to start and to continue your theological education. Mm. Did you have to pay I, extra to pronounce it as logos instead of logos? I mean, was it, did they, did they give you that, that right and that privilege? I don't, I still don't know. I still don't know. Is it, wh- which is it? I, I hear it both ways. The Greek it's Lagos. Scholar, it's two Lagos. Omicrons. You say Omicron variant. It's ah, Lagos. Uh, is that, is that correct, Michael Cooper? <laughs> yeah. Our Greek I, I, scholar? That's how I see it. That's how I see it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, to your point, Matt, it was, I've been teaching a class on church planting in Korea <clears throat> this, this past semester and had a conversation with one of our students uh, last night and Bless his heart. He's been in Korea for two years. He's from the African continent. He has three children that he has not seen for two years because he had to uproot himself to go to a seminary in Korea. And that's happening in many places around the world. And it doesn't have to happen uh, now with technology. And, And like you said, I know Knox has led the way in this for many, many years. We're in in some ways walking in their footsteps with our master classes, but we need to be uh, innovative in the way in which we bring theological education, right. and that we need to do it with quality. But we have got to do it rapidly because the need is so great. I was on, I recently talked to uh, uh, somebody who's in uh, Central America. And is he's just like desperate for it. He's like, we need more stuff in our language, in our native language here mm-hmm. in Central America and Guatemala uh, for theological training. Uh, the world is, is starving for it. And um, yeah, this is part of the part of the innovation, I think, that's coming and is necessary and, and needed um, for the sake of the gospel. So, yeah, I'm glad to be a part of it in two worlds, uh, both the physiology and then also my relationship with Knox. But um, mo- more importantly, it's just I think there's just so many options out there for us and for people to explore um, and to get the training that they need um, and uh, and to feel confident in in the hope that they that they have. We are really glad that you joined us and are downloading and are sharing this podcast uh, with others. And uh, we're grateful for you and for doing theology and community with us here at Ephesiology. And we're part, we're glad that you're part of that growing Ephesiology global community. Learn more about Ephesiology. Get access to free missional resources for you, your church, and leadership teams at Ephesiology.com. And of course, dialogue with us on our social media platforms. And uh, well, for Michael, Andrew, and myself, Merry Christmas. We'll talk again right here on the Ephesiology Podcast next time.